learners welcome to today's class today we'll be looking deeply into the formal aspects of the novel but before going to that we'll have a summary of what was dealt with in the last class in the last class we saw an introduction to the novel introduction into the author's biography the plot of the novel the detailed summary of the novel and the themes of the novel and things like that but today we are going into the much deeper understanding of the novel by looking at the characterization the many figurative languages used in the novel etc first we look into the art of characterization and the protagonist mark and dias art of characterization is traditional the externals of characters are given sometimes to a set description but more frequently to stray remarks or comments in the course of the story as the action develops we know about the characters from what they themselves do and say and from what others say about them it is in this way that nathan and rukmini acquire larger than life dimensions and become symbolic of the faceless indian peasantry suffering and oppressed not only are the major figures living and breathing individuals but even the minor ones come alive in her hands beggars prostitutes and peasants symbolize the economic backwardness of the nation the swamis are the spokesmen of traditional values unpopular with rational men of commercial civilization all these are evident in the character of the protagonist rukmini so now we begin with the deep understanding of the characters and first we go with the protagonist rukmini rukmini is the main character of the story as you all know she was the youngest of four sisters their father was the village headman by the time of her marriage her father's influence and prestige had declined hence she was married to nathan a poor tenant farmer she began her life with him by finding him to be very kind and loving soon she gave birth to their first child a daughter named airavathi whom she also calls aira and eventually five more sons are born to her in rapid succession rukmini was a sensible and prudent housewife and managed her home well she was a true helpmate to her husband she not only did the household work but also helped in the field her courage determination resourcefulness and her patient acceptance of her lot were all displayed during the days of misfortune which followed soon rukmini is one of the immortal characters of literature and her life story once read cannot be forgotten she is an archetypical figure symbolic of the suffering soul of india through the ages kamala markandeya has expertly narrated the story through rukmini it seems as if the changes that has come in the life of rukmini is parallel to the changes that has come in the history of india thus rukmini is important as a witness to the changing times her personal story is connected with the political history of india indian's urban development and modernization is the point on which the life of rukmini and the history of india changes in the novel rukmini comments and i quote change i had known before and it had been gradual but the change that now came into my life into all our life blasting its way into our village seemed wrote in the twinkling of an eye thus we can say that kamala markandeya's art of characterization stands out brilliantly through the protagonist rukmini it is also important to note that it is a woman centered narrative throughout the novel rukmini is faced with struggle after struggle with no indication that her circumstances will improve each time her situation worsens rukmini endures quietly holding on to the hope that things will soon be better she believes that a person's spirit is the most important factor in overcoming the harsh realities of life I quote a few lines from the novel 
Well, and what if we gave in to our troubles at every step? We would be pitiable creatures indeed to be so weak, for is not a man's spirit given to him to rise above his misfortunes? This aspect gives her an universal appeal. She compares her struggle with that of the struggle of the people around the world. Rukmini has a spirit filled with hope and longing for something more than what she has. This theme runs throughout the entire novel along with optimism. Again, I quote a few lines from the novel. Hope and fear, twin forces that tug at us first in one direction and then in another, and which was the stronger no one could say. Of the latter we never spoke but was always with us. Fear comes along as a theme with hope and it is always present it seems with Rukmini and Nathan. Now let's look at the other characters in the novel. So the first one would be Nathan the husband of Rukmini. Nathan, the husband of Rukmini, is a poor farmer with a loving nature. As a farmer, he is skillful. Initially, he was very angry with Rukmini and later on admires her much. He praises her and says that, and I quote from the novel, Rukku indeed is a clever woman, unquote. He is a practical man and his down-to-earth realism is best seen in his relationship with his sons. After this, his fall in the village and disintegration is rapid. He drifts to the city in the hope of finding shelter with his son, Murugan. Failing in that, he lives for some time as a beggar on the charity and shelter provided by the temple. Then he takes to breaking stones and hopes to earn enough to return to the village. But he is not fortunate enough to come back home to his village. He falls ill and passes away calmly in the lap of his beloved wife and lifelong companion. He is a typical Indian peasant both in his suffering and his nobility and integrity of character. Now we look into another character who is also a minor character in the story named Kundi. Kunti is a negative character in the novel. She is immoral, corrupt, scheming, intriguing and totally heartless. Though a minor character, she serves as a foil to Rukku and Aira. Kunti stands for the modern, the progressive and the urban and the evil which is inherent in the modern and urban way of life. An important thing to be noted here is that the strong characters in the novel are women. This is reflected through the characters like Rukmini, Airavadi and Kunti. The critic Shoshana M. Lando talks about this in her article The Value of Suffering in Kamala Markandeya's Nectar in a Sieve and I quote a few lines from that article. Kamala Markandeya's Nectar in a Sieve portrays its positive women characters as ideal sufferers and nurturers. Rukmini and Aira appear in Nectar in a Sieve as opposites of Kunti. Their goodness originates in their acceptance of suffering, whereas Kunti's evil originates in her refusal to sacrifice herself for others. As ideal images, Markandeya's heroines correlate with Shirvada's conception of a how early Indo-Anglican novels portray women as Sita-like characters. By fulfilling cultural values, however, Rukmini and Aira find in their way of life not only suffering but also a sureness and inner peace. The language in Nectar in a Sieve is characterized by fluidity, smoothness and, I quote, the purity of running water. Kamala Markandeya's language is full of lilt, 
a richness of color and texture which lends a poetic touch to her descriptions. This is predominant in her descriptions of the village and the rhythms of rural life in the novel Nectar in a Sieve. According to the famous Indian critic Srinivas Iyengar, sufficiency and suggestiveness are the outstanding qualities of Markandeya's prose as is evident in the following lines from the Nectar in a Sieve. And I quote a few lines from the novel. Rain had softened the road, liquid mud came squelching up between my toes as I walked. Ahead and behind me were scores of footprints. Many of them like small pools where water had seeped in. The cart tracks were full of water too. Long lines crisscrossing with mud flung upon either side of the trenches. End of the quote. Now another instance from the novel and I quote. Walking in rain or experiencing tear, the sense of secret shame or guilt, love or revulsion, fulfillment or frustration, stillness or pandemonium, the right words evoke the scene, the feeling, the action or the psychological state. End quote. The beauty of Markandeya's style lies in its natural fusion of the personal and the political, the individual and the rational and traditional and the modern. She admits the importance of physical and material needs, but she prefers to idealize life while also depicting sympathetically the existential anguish of her characters. Markandeya writes within the framework of the English tradition. Her Indianness is evident in her use of some easy to understand words from Indian languages words which carry a charm and an aroma of their own. A list of such words she herself has given in the very beginning of the novel Nectar in a Sieve with their English renderings. Her Indianness is also seen in her use of vivid and sensuous imagery from the common scenes and sights of India. Mark and Tia's use of English is very similar to how an Englishman would use the language and yet her novel has clear indication that it is written by an Indian English novelist. The symbols are used by literary artists not only to show a meaning which is hidden but also to evoke emotions. For instance, Markandeya uses the village, the thatched hut with mud walls, agriculture, green fields, the garden of beans and brinjols, the birds and other rural objects to symbolize home and happiness. On the other hand, the city and tannery, brick and cement and buildings and many urban objects symbolize suffering and misery. The tannery is a symbol of modernity because its coming threatens the old ways of life. It transforms the village environmentally and economically. It also transforms the relationships between the people within the village. Now, water is very crucial for an agricultural community. It is powerfully symbolic that Nathan and Rukmini named their first child Airavati after one of the great rivers of Asia as of all things water was most precious to us. Learning is another symbol of hope in Nectar in a Sieve. As is the case for so much in the novel, education is a double-edged sword. Ruku's father decided to educate his children and it helped Ruku in their time of affliction. Drums in Nectar in a Sieve symbolize times of great change. An introduction to drumming occurs at Ira's wedding where a drummer joins with the fiddler to make up a whole band. These powerful symbols used in the novel helps in bringing the contrast between the rural life and the village life. All these are the symbols of change. The gradual changes that come in with India's independence 
modernization and urban development are portrayed very clearly through these symbols. Now we move on to another aspect of the formal language used in the novel and that is irony. Irony is a literary device frequently used by writers to indicate the contrariness of human life. It is a matter of common experience that in life we do not get what we expect or desire. We want one thing and we get its exact opposite. Thus, the irony of life or circumstance may be defined as a situation which is the exact opposite of what has been expected or desired. Such situations seem to have been contrived by malignant fate. Hence, it is also called the irony of fate. Irony of fate or circumstances or life lies in the frustration of human aspiration. Often, irony is used to show how human beings are puppets in the hands of higher powers and helpless to do what they want. Irony plays an important part in great works of literature and it is most frequently used by writers to create tragic effects. Mark and Taya's characters are all victims of the irony of life or fate. Everything in the novel happens contrary to their wishes and expectations. In the life of Rukmini and Nathan, the unexpected and the undesired constantly happens causing great sorrow and suffering. A brief consideration of the story of Rukmini and Nathan would make the point clear. They are good and noble. They have no evil in them. Still, they are the victims of universal harshness, playthings in the hands of cruel destiny, which takes pleasure in inflicting pain and suffering on them. Had the land not been sold, they would have lived happily. Had they found a home with their son in the city, they would have been comfortable even in the city. But they are forced to leave the village because of the setting up of the tannery. They are compelled to live on charity in the city. All these are examples of irony of fate in the novel. As you all know, this novel was critically acclaimed not only in India but also around the world. So, it is important to look at certain critical comments on the novel. Now, industrialization of a rural community brings in its wake a number of problems. Prices begin to rise and the farmer is unable to make both ends meet by working on the land. There is hardship, hunger and starvation and the natural consequence is that people have no option but to migrate to some industrial town and take up some service in the industry. Rukmini is a triumph of the spirit of tradition but she is also the child of transition. Through her story, the novelist has represented the travail of rural India in a state of transition from the agricultural way of life to industrial way of life, from the rural to the urban. As Dr. Krishna Rao remarked, and I quote him, In Nectar in a Sieve, Mark and Daya dramatizes the tragedy of a traditional Indian village and a peasant family assaulted by industrialization. End quote. The disintegration of Rukmini's family and her consequent suffering is also the story of the disintegration of the rural mode of life under the assault of industrialization along with the colossal suffering that is caused as a result of the clash of the old and the new. The tannery is an industry which comes to the village. It stands for the western and the modern way of life and east-west conservative progressive modern orthodox tensions and conflicts are thus woven into the story of Rukmini and Nathan. The movement 
of the rural population to the cities is depicted by their leaving their home but survival in the city is impossible for them those cities are often considered as places of immense opportunity nathan's death in the city is used as a symbol for the cruel destructive phase of modernity which does not allow a good human being like nathan to live a decent life or die a decent death the critic meena shirwadkar says about women characters in indian english novels thus and i quote the cause of her suffering springs mainly from poverty and natural calamity the women are from the rural sections of the society they are the daughters of the soil and have inherited age old traditions which they do not question their courage lies in meek or at times cheerful way of facing poverty or calamity this aspect is clearly depicted through the characters in nectar in a sieve rukmini does not like the change that the tannery brings to her village and life she is the only one that protests against this as she is a daughter of the soil now it's also important to look into the three facets of the novel and its conclusion in great detail markanteya's novels have a rich texture they tell a personal story but the story is told against a vast social background and we are also told of the conflicts and tensions which cause suffering and tragedy for example nectar in a sieve is the autobiography of rukmini the social background is provided by a village in transition and the conflict and tension are caused by intrusion of modern industry life lived in rural india is the backdrop of the personal story of rukmini and nathan and her suffering and the disintegration of her family fuse and mingle with the disintegration of the rural way of life under the impact of modernity now we look at the personal story that is depicted in the novel rukmini who narrates the story of her life from the time she came of age up to the time she returns to the village as an old widow and is able to survey her past calmly she is the child of transition between the insular autonomous village life of old and the new village life dependent upon urban civilization and in constant contact with it now a look at the social background in the social background markandaya depicts rural poverty and bankruptcy life in an indian village has been realistically depicted with sympathy and skill but without any intrusive commentary society of peasants with their myriad sufferings hardy attitudes and strong faith form the backdrop of the novel now the wider conflict in the novel the suffering of rural dwellers is accentuated as a result of the wider conflict between the agrarian and industrial way of life the coming of the tannery spells ruin and disaster for the humble villagers for it is in conflict with their own way of life and now we come to the conclusion the narrative comes to an end in an open ended manner bringing to a close the life of the narrator up to this point the manner in which rukmini tells her story suggests that she relives it with correctives which only hindsight can provide in the novel kamala markandeya doubt tales the personal story of rukmini with the political and economical history of india it is a linear narrative with one narrator the protagonist rukmini the entire novel is well plotted the first part of the novel deals with the life in the village and the second part slowly brings in the gradual changes that come with modernization and the urban life the changes happen both in the life of rukmini 
and in the history of India. Thus, both these are well connected in the novel. And now we come to the end of this class, but in the next class, we will still learn about new Indian writers. Thank you.